Uh, welcome back to Ash Museum of Science Summer of Science series. All summer long, we'll be finding experts and local science partners to help us serve our mission of providing quality STEM education across Western North Carolina. Today with me, I have Neil Piper, uh, the director at the Margaret C. Woodson Planetarium in Salisbury, North Carolina, and I'm Isabella Field, and I'm an intern at the Ash Museum of Science. So, uh, Neil, tell us about yourself. Uh, what got you interested in the field of astronomy, um, and how did you get involved in your work at the planetarium? Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, this is uh, it's just fun to actually see a high schooler's face because that is my job. I'm a teacher, and so uh, to actually see a high schooler and go, "Hey," uh, is much better than the adults that I normally have to work with now remotely. Uh, yeah. But uh, me as an astronomer, or actually as a planetarium director, as a science educator, the first time I ever walked into a planetarium was when I got the job. I know oh. that's insane. I know I didn't <laughs> go to a planetarium when I was a kid. Um, I actually applied for the job here at Horizons and at the planetarium as a longtime STEM educator. So I was, uh, so I was able to uh, apply for the job and say, I love science, I love space science, I taught um, AP environmental science and earth science for a long time. So that's uh, it. And so they hired me and then I said, well, what's my classroom going to be like? And it's amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like a high ceiling, you know, 360 dome experience. Yes. And so I was able to do a lot of upgrades myself and, and now it's, it's my classroom. And so uh, when we didn't have the Rona, when we had no Rona, then it was, uh, then I saw about 32,000 students in my, uh, in my planetarium. So uh, awesome. I will, this year in 2020, we're not going to say the number that I've seen, but it's quite a bit less than that. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. I mean, with the way everything is now, yeah. I'm sure that's effective, but that's still, that's really awesome. So what kind of, like, I'm sure you cover all range of topics at the planetarium, but like, Give us an overview, like what is your typical, like what do you typically teach students at this planetarium? So when, uh, when the lights go out, the, the awesome happens because we have a projector that has a realistic night sky. So it doesn't matter what the, the, um, the, the weather is, uh, when the lights go off, you see uh, it, it looks like you're outside and the stars are twinkling. Uh, so we almost start every show with what's going on right now. Uh, in astronomy, because the cool part about astronomy is not what happened yesterday, but what's going to happen tomorrow. It's kind of like the weather. No one cares about yesterday's weather. So we talk about what's going to happen. And so right now we'd be talking about the Perseid meteor shower, yes. because that's what's happening kind of right now. And some of the manned missions that are going on, um, you know, uh, you know, we've got a, a rover headed to Mars. We've got all these cool things going on. So uh, in space science, it's always about what happens tomorrow, but uh, I get to do other curriculum too. So I get to talk about the bottom of the ocean and we can like pretend like we're at the bottom of the ocean in my, in my planetarium or flying with dinosaurs or doing whatever. So it's yeah. a pretty cool experience when you come into the it's like, I describe it as a VR experience for a whole crowd. Yeah. So like a crowdsource VR, so. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I'm sure that that whole experience is a really good like way to educate people and like kids or like, you know, even high school kids. It's really exciting, you know, get to go into a planetarium and all that. So I'm sure it's a really awesome way to teach for sure. Definitely. Yeah. It, it definitely, we, we get paid in oohs and ahs. That's what, I, that's what I think. Yes. So the more that yes. you ooh and ah, then I'm like, yep, gotcha. Yes. And uh, the older students, like, uh, you know, upper high school students, which I did get to teach this past co uh, couple of years, I've been teaching an AP class in addition to my duties as a planetarium director. Mm -hmm. And so I bring my students down there. And I think the older uh, students even love it as much as the kids did. Uh, they were just like, we get to have class in the planetarium today. I'm like, yep, that's the bonus of being <laughs> in yeah. this class. So uh, yeah. they enjoyed it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So since you do work in the planetarium, you deal with astronomy a lot. Uh, there's a lot of branches of astronomy. So which one is your favorite? There's many, and it's hard to pick one. I love astronomy. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Um, and yeah, it, it, I wish I was a research astronomer. I've, I've been to the top of Mauna Kea, seen all the cool telescopes that are going on right now. I have to say, though, that I'm a sucker for planets. I, I'm planetary science. Uh, you know, 
if you do this, if you're in this business and you don't think it would be cool to find life on another planet or talk about that, like, you know, little aliens or anything like that, it yeah. seems like you would, uh, it's almost like a science fiction thing, but I think that in, we're seeing in this generation that it's not science fiction. We're finding water all over our solar system. Uh, at the bottom of every crater in the moon, we're finding water. So uh, eventually the, the discovery of life on another planet is gonna happen. And I'm super excited that we can see that happening in the next, I, I think in the next few years, maybe even the next decade. Yeah, for sure. That is awesome. All right, we're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. The Amos Summer of Science series is brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thermo Fisher is the world leader in serving science. Their mission is to enable customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. Thermo Fisher Scientific, step up, step beyond. More information at thermofisher.com. And Hedrick Industries, standing for quality and commitment to service. HedrickIND.com. The Duke Energy Foundation, committed to making strategic investments to build powerful communities where nature and wildlife thrive, students can excel, and a talented workforce drives economic prosperity for all. Duke-Energy.com. And Baker Grading and Landscaping, changing the landscape while keeping with nature's flow. BakerGrading.com. Lancaster Law Firm, real estate attorneys for realtors, lenders, and homeowners. LancasterLawFirm.com. Holston Gases, your independent supplier of industrial, medical, propane, and beverage gases. HolstonGases.com. And member and donor support from people like you. All right, welcome back to Summer of Science. Uh, let's continue to hear from our scientist here, Neil Fife. All right. Uh, next question here, let's see. Um, per, so you mentioned earlier the Perseid meteor shower, um, and I know Planetarium, you're honestly the, obviously getting to look at that and you know learn a lot about that. So can you tell us a little bit about what that will be like, how we can see it and all that? Sure. Um, first of all, uh, one of the misconceptions, that's what I kind of deal in, is uh, how big is a meteor? And a lot of uh, a lot of students and even public, if you said, okay, well, you see this giant streak of light going across the sky, it may even look like a fireball occasionally, maybe once in a month, you would get to see something that looks really big. You would think that like a whole car is coming through our atmosphere, but it's actually really small. It's the size of a grain of sand. And so that's probably the first misconception is that uh, this, uh, that the meteor shower is dangerous. Like, you know, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be attacked by asteroids <laughs> or anything. Like that. That's not true. Um, so that's the first misconception. And the second is that if you go outside for a meteor shower, you're going to see like thousands of meteors, you know, in a night. And that's not true either. Almost every night you're, if you stay out long enough, you're going to see a meteor. Uh, you're going to see a streak of light. Uh, but that, during the meteor shower, we're just going through a tail of a comet, uh, or um, in, th in this case, it's a fairly large comet that passed through our Earth's uh, orbit. And so you're going to get a couple hundred, possibly an hour, which would mean about two per minute or three per minute. And that's, that's a lot. That in is a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And you have to be in a dark spot. spot. So in Rowan County, where I teach, uh, that would mean going towards, uh, from Salisbury, kind of headed towards Mooresville along Highway 70. Uh, that's the darkest part of our county. And so it's only about 15 minutes from the center of town. And you're in a fairly dark area. Uh, for y'all in Asheville, you have a great place you can get up on the parkway and look. So that's uh, as long as they don't close the park on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, the most part, I think it's open. So Yeah. So, and the best time to look at a uh, meteor shower is actually just a couple, as soon as the sun sets, wait about 45 minutes and that's a good spot or go out uh, about an hour before, uh, before sunrise. And gotcha. you'll see, and that's actually a really cool time to see the International Space Station too. Uh, yeah. In the next couple of weeks, uh, we have... The space station near Asheville is going to be uh, overhead and in Salisbury too. It's going to be always in the morning. So you have to get up early, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you, so I know 
do this is just like you sort of just wondering do like scientists at nasa and all that even though Perseid is obviously a very reoccurring and like predictable meteor shower but do they still research it study it like you know take a look at it like what is there to learn from it from yeah there's uh i mean if uh we get meteorites if it hits the planet uh then that's when uh the scientists go crazy um and they actually just got done with a, a survey scan of antarctica trying to look for uh, meteorites. Cause obviously in the snow, if you see anything dark, it's probably not a rock that someone threw on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's really easy to see. And actually uh, even uh, if you, if you want to delve into this part of astronomy of, of finding sort of uh, things that have come through our atmosphere, uh, you can do, you can find micrometeorites. Uh, there's some good YouTube videos on that. Uh, just finding micrometeorites, you'll you'll find one if you look. Uh, and so e anywhere on the planet, um, you you can you can find a meteorite. Uh, it may only be this big, <laughs> but it, that's still pretty cool to think that it came from some part of the solar system. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So when scientists study those meteorites, what are they like gathering? Like what what? Why do they all get excited about meteorites? Nope. Oh, they, uh, that's, uh, that's a really good question. They, uh, it's all about composition. Uh, so to get through our atmosphere, it, it needs to be made of, uh, you know, certain elements. So it's either going to be nickel iron or it's going to be carbon. Everything else is just going to burn up in the atmosphere. So it's all about ratios. And honestly, if you um, were to discover one that had an odd ratio, uh, you know, we're always looking for the oddballs in science. Like we have yeah. all this expected data and then we have this really cool oddball. Uh, that's what we're looking for uh, because then that can indicate that the meteorite came from, you know, the outer part of our solar system, maybe another solar system. And so that's the kind of data that we're really excited about. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right, we're going to take another quick break, hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in to the Amos Summer of Science series. I'm Rachel Sparks, board president for the Asheville Museum of Science. We're excited to share this series with friends and supporters. During the pandemic, it's important that we use digital technology to continue the mission of Amos to spark curiosity and a lifelong love of learning. Amos has shared online programs like our daily doses of science and Ask the Scientists over 115,000 times with over 3,000 science explorers during quarantine. The Summer of Science series We'll share important science curriculum, and I encourage your support of our programs. Temporarily closing the museum has had a significant impact on our services and our finances. So I'm asking for your support with a donation of $40. That can sponsor 25 online engagements in STEM learning. Some can give more and some less, and any amount you can give will be very helpful. Please go online to ashevillescience.org slash support dash us or text the number on your screen to donate thank you so much welcome back to summer science series another question that i've just kind of always had uh has been in the like in the field of astronomy i know sometimes like when you take the class in middle school it's a lot just like learning about the planets and stuff but how much math is really involved in all of this space travel because i get the feeling it's quite a lot yeah it is um and i love um there's a, there's a couple of cool channels um uh diana is physics girl she's great she explains a lot of high level stuff in a way that kids can understand uh, mm -hmm. but there's one new one it's called five levels of physics and they take it like concepts like gravity and they'll take it from the, you know, young elementary level, and then they'll explain it again to a middle elementary, a middle schooler, a high schooler, a college mm -hmm. student, and then an expert in the field. And so they'll take something simple like gravity. We know, you know, mm -hmm. when something drops, it, you know, it falls at a certain rate here on Earth. So something simple like gravity, it becomes incredibly complex when you get to an expert level. So mm -hmm. I, I think of it as, uh, you know, it's as much math as you want it to be. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was awesome getting to talk yeah. to you. So much. It was great. It was super cool. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.